Hi there and welcome back to the channel. Over the next few videos I'm going to show you how to set up Windows and a Raspberry Pi so that you can develop in Visual Studio Code with .NET, target a Raspberry Pi and debug. The first steps in this video that we'll cover is setting up a Raspberry Pi so that it boots. We'll set it up so that it can connect to the Wi-Fi. We'll set it up with SSH so that we can remote terminal into it and configure it. And we'll also set up Samba so that we can get file sharing going between Windows and the Raspberry Pi. Welcome to the channel, all the gear, no idea. So the first thing we need to do is download the Raspberry Pi imager software. So we go to raspberrypi.com and we just click software. Just go scroll down there. So download the Windows version. It doesn't take very long, it's quite small. Um, so we'll just open that up and execute. We go, we do the install process. This doesn't take very long at all, very quick. And as soon as we finish, it's actually gonna launch the Raspberry Pi imager. So this is so we can burn the uh, micro SD card with the operating system. So we need an operating system ready for a headless. So let's choose the Raspberry Pi OS that has no desktop environment. If you wanted to, you could load that later on. Uh, we're gonna choose our SD writer. So that's there. And then we're gonna hit write. Now it's gonna overwrite the entire SD card. So make sure you save any files that you need to save like photos that were previously on there. This process um, takes a long time, so um, this has been speeded up slightly, So, um, but it does take several minutes. After the writing process, it then goes through a verify process. Again, that's um, not as long. Um, now we're in a position to, we could remove the card, but it in fact demounts the card from Windows, so we need to take it out and reinsert it again. Here we are in Windows on a command prompt, and we're just going to, I've prepared a file earlier. This is the one to prepare you for using Wi-Fi. So you need to create a file that looks very similar, and look down below at the notes for the exact details, um, but your SSID and PSK need to match your Wi-Fi details. So let's copy this file to the micro SD card. So I've copied that from my C drive where I previously prepared it. And you can see the file at the bottom there. So we've got one additional file beyond all the others created by the imager. So now we have to create an empty file called SSH. So we do that with the copy command. Here we can see there are the two files we've created, the two additional files. So back onto the C drive, take the card out. So I'm just gonna mount this card and we're gonna put this into the Raspberry Pi. There's this slot there, so put it into the slot, just push it in, there we go. Now we need some power, so we get a USB cable. The Raspberry Pi doesn't actually take that much power, the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, so I'm just powering it from a USB hub here. Um, so good to go, can you see that it's, um, some activity, represents all the activity. This process probably takes about a minute or so, so there, there is a bit of a long wait, so we'll just speed that up. After a while, the light quiesces and settles down, um, and it's more than likely, hopefully, attached to the Wi-Fi. Here we go, we're gonna SSH into the Raspberry Pi. The username is Pi by default, and the default host name is raspberrypi.local. Let's have a go. Now, the first time we log into a host with SSH, it'll come up with this fingerprint uh, warning. So we just say yes and go beyond that. We won't see that again for a similar host. The password is raspberry by default, um, and so we're in. Now, back to Windows. Um, this is, so now we're gonna prepare SSH so we don't have to keep typing in the password. So we need to generate some keys. So we use the SSH key gen command in Windows. Just hit return for all the defaults here. Um, they're, they're good enough. And if we have a look, we can see that we've got two files generated. One is the private key and one is the public key. And the public key is the .pub file. So let's just print that out, see what it looks like quite a long string. So the way that we're gonna copy this is highlight this with the mouse and then hit enter 
to copy it. That's the equivalent of edit copy. So now it's in the copy buffer, so we can use it to paste later on. Now we go back to the Raspberry Pi and we make a directory called .ssh. Let's go into that directory. And now in that directory, we have to create a private key file. So we're gonna cat the user input. So anything we type is gonna go into a file called authorized keys. So it's there waiting now. So we do edit, paste, and paste in the public key value that we previously copied. So now we've got that, um, but probably worth checking that in fact the file does contain that string. So let's just make sure. There we go. So the file authorized keys contains our public key. So let's go back to our home directory. Now it's a good test is to exit out of the, the Raspberry Pi, back to Windows briefly. And let's try connecting again. And hopefully this time we won't need a password. There we go, we're straight in without a password. So that's worked, that's great. We now need to install the Samba SMB software so that we can interoperate with Windows. So let's use sudo again, apt-get update. This is just to update the catalog of all the available software. Then we'll do an upgrade. This takes quite a while to, to get going. So now we need to install the Samba uh, SMB software. So let's install Samba as a package. And again, this takes quite a while. Do we want to proceed? Yes. So I've just speeded this up. There we go, it's done. So back to Windows. Now this time we're gonna look at this system info command because this tells us something. In fact, the domain, the workgroup name. So just make sure you remember what the domain workgroup is called. In my case, it was workgroup. Back on the Raspberry Pi. Now we want to edit the Samba file, Samba configuration file, the SMB configuration file. So let's go down here. First thing to check is just that the workgroup name is the same as that we checked on our Windows command. Um, it is indeed workgroup. Then go to the end of the file. You could hit page down um, to get to the end there. And we need to type in some details regarding the Windows share that we're gonna create. So we're gonna create this one called Pi Share. Um, and we need to set the path of what directory on the Raspberry Pi we're going to share. So we're going to share our home directory slash home slash Pi. And then we're going to make it writable. Uh, yes, so we can update it. Um, we're just going to set some attributes for creating when we create files and also for directory masks as well. But this basically just gives us full access to the Raspberry Pi from Windows in terms of file sharing. and we'll not make it public. So that means we'll need a username to be able to uh, share the network drive. There we go. So we just write that back out with control O and then exit with control X. Now we're gonna to have to create a user for the Samba share. So we'll add another user called Pi. So, um, and this is specifically for SMB, for Samba. Um, and we'll set the password to Raspberry so there's no confusion there. So I just type in Raspberry again. Um, so we've added a user Pi for the Samba SMB. And now we're gonna do a reboot. And this takes about 45 seconds. Okay, let's SSH back into the Raspberry Pi just to check. Now this time we're gonna lose the dot .local here. So instead of Raspberry Pi dot .local, now that we've got SMB in part of the, the work group, we can just uh, SSH to Pi at Raspberry Pi. 
We're going to see the fingerprint again, but again, this will be the last time because it's a new host rather than dot local. And we're straight in, no password. Um, so everything working there and we've joined the work group. Next thing under Windows is let's create a, um, a file share. So let's map our P drive to the Raspberry Pi. And the name we created was Pi Share. Uh, we want to give the username. So remember that was Pi as well. And the password was Raspberry. And we want to make this permanent across boots. So let's specify permanent yes. Map that network drive and let's just test it out by going to the P drive. We'll just list out all the files there, including the hidden ones. So with all, and there we go, we can see the .ssh directory we created and there's some other hidden files there. I hope you've had the same success I did. Thanks for watching and I hope it was useful. I've left full instructions down in the description. It's got a copy of the WA supplement file, the, the .conf file, so you can just copy and edit that and use that in your configuration. The next video, I'm gonna configure Visual Studio Code so that we can use debugging real time inside the Raspberry Pi. As always, I've left the behind the scenes description so you can see what challenges I faced in putting this video together, what gear I use, and what settings I use. Hopefully see you soon, please subscribe, please uh, hit the notify bell, and I'll see you soon, thank you.